personal identity protection company Forge Rock, now publicly trading under the ticker FORG after raising $275 million in its public debut today. Shares were priced above their range at 25. The stock opened for trading this morning at 35, and it's currently, well, at 36.68 for a gain of 46%. Look, the work from home movement certainly helped bolster Forge Rock's over 3 billion accounts, but it also spiked cybersecurity concerns and personal identity attacks. But Forge Rock says that the solution lies in the elimination of your username and your password to the man celebrating the big IPO today and uh, at the New York Stock Exchange, the CEO of Forge Rock, uh, Fran Roche. Fran, thanks for coming on. Congratulations, by thanks the way. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. It's a great okay. day for us here. It, it really is. And it would be a great day if we didn't have to remember usernames and passwords anymore. You, well, okay, we get rid of them. What do we replace them with? Well, we think there's just many more ways to more intelligently recognize a user besides a username and password, which has been around now for 60 years. And I consider usernames and passwords like lose-lose. They're bad experience and bad security. So we think there are really two combinations that are going to help us accelerate their elimination. And one is around really leveraging a lot of biometrics that are being built into devices like Apple, who's doing great things around Face ID and Touch ID. All the other providers are using open standards to be able to do that. I think second is that we believe by bringing AI to the, uh, to the solution, where we kind of recognize user and device behavior to quickly recognize a legitimate user and giving them frictionless access while blocking malicious actor is really the future of identity. Is that easy to do? I mean, is that something you currently do or something that you're working on for the future? It's absolutely something that we currently do today. Um, okay. We have the capability to be able to, you know, throughout an entire identity journey, uh, to be able to recognize that user and provide great security and convenience. But, you know, moving to usernames and password, I mean, moving away from them is complicated because it's not only about technology. It's about change management. It's about moving people away from something they're really comfortable with, even though they don't like them. It's still going to be a big move for the industry over the next couple of years. Your own research um, finds there was a 450% increase in the number of breaches to one and a half billion. And those were for breaches that contained login cr credentials. Um, aside from the login credential, what is another popular or successful way that thieves can get in? Yeah, I mean, we think about ransomware, right, which is in the news today. And it's a huge problem for our economy and our country. And I think we see 65% of these ransomware attacks begin with somebody's compromised identity. Somebody managed to steal someone's username and password, break into the enterprise, and plant that ransomware. So we think by leveraging our technology, we can keep those bad guys out so they never get in to plant the ransomware. We can bring that down dramatically. Identity is the root, a lot of, a root of a lot of these breaches. Yeah. Have you been speaking to anybody in the White House about um, using your uh, technology and software to help fend off these ransomware attacks that have really increased in a big way? Absolutely. We've had some interesting dialogues with definitely people in the White House. And I think their recommendations around kind of the basics, deploy multi-factor authentication. If everybody did that, if the banks and the brokerage and the healthcare companies, if everyone deployed MFA, that would really help reduce the risk of these kind of ransomware and that comes native out of the box capability in our platform and we work with some of the largest customers around the world like BMW, the BBC, Geico, mm -hmm. Weight Watchers, Standard Charter Bank to implement MFA. It's a great foundation. Are there certain industries that do it better than others? You know I think financial services has always sort of been the pioneer when it comes to both user experience and security. Mm -hmm. They have the most at risk they're under the most regulation, and so I think they've done the most to advance security protection for consumers. But I think it's expanding out to everywhere. Our healthcare data is more and more online. It needs to be protected. Our credit card information, everything really is moving digital. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because the, you said the banks might have the most to lose, right? So they're, they're putting all that money, that investment up front because the cost of a of, of ransomware attack or a data breach is tremendous. What is the cost per breach to a company on average? You know, I think the cost is massive. It's massive not only to companies who it can be millions of dollars of loss in both revenue and brand reputation, but it's also lost to all of us as consumers. Those costs get carried on to us in the, in the form of fees. And if you're a victim of this, it can take months or years to restore your credit and get that information back. 
So we really got to solve this problem earlier in the cycle. Yeah, and by some metrics, the cost per breach, $8.6 million. Fran, thank you so much and congratulations once again.